It's another ridiculous day in the world of Magic the Gathering. Wizards of the Coast has screwed up horrifically with the festivals in a box that they recently sent out. On top of that, March of the Machines has horrific quality issues. And apparently, a game store sold a serialized card from March of the Machines for $9. Magic. History. I'm an old wizard. The magic historian. My bones hurt. Greetings, owners of fine luxury cardboard rectangles. My friends, I hope the day finds you well because we have gathered for a ridiculous installment of Mega Magic news. This is the March of the Machine weekend wrap-up, and there is a lot to cover. Wizards has wasted no time in screwing up in numerous ways, but before we dive into that, I do just want to touch on some other news that isn't a failure and might actually be fun to hear, depending on whether you care about a game called Puzzles and Dragons, which I didn't know about before now, but is a match three game that is going to be having some Magic the Gathering flavor added into it shortly. That is the fun little note, the appetizer, to get you ready for the ridiculous series of mistakes that Wizards of the Coast has made. But first, let's talk actually about the $9 serialized card, because that also isn't bad news, but it is interesting news. So a game store apparently made the mistake of putting a Garuda serialized out for nine dollars. Now these I believe at the time of pre-release were probably about four to five hundred dollars. Now that's pre-release price so we could see this go down to 200 or 300 but serialized cards for nine dollars that's just a regular version. The person just thought this was a foil Garuda, put $9 on it, somebody picked it up at the store, boom, posted it on Twitter, check out what I got. There was this huge hubbub, and what actually happened was the person took it back to the game store, the game store said thank you very much, and gave them some store credit as a reward for being a good dude and not hose bagging them. So obviously there are multiple ways to look at this. Some people say, yo, if a store marks something at whatever price and you buy it at the price, you've done nothing wrong. And there are other people going, yo, if you're gonna hose an LGS like this and just take that value from them, I think that's absolutely scuzzy. So they're definitely are people falling on a wide spectrum for this one. It's not absolute, there's a lot of clashing going on. So that's an interesting side note to the gigantic dumpster fire that is March of the Machine. Wizards of the Coast has screwed up a number of ways. In the last video, we talked about the bundle coalition issues where you could actually get up to eight list cards in a bundle, but that also opens the door for you to get zero list cards in a bundle. And I said that the coalition issues only were in the bundles. Well, guess what, friends? I was wrong. And the coalition issues that Wizards has made here is a big problem for them. Regavan is popping up everywhere. Not normal amounts of Ragavan. Like, yo, why is Ragavan showing up in every booster I'm cracking? Why am I cracking four boosters in a row and getting Ragavan? They are everywhere. And that's actually the most minor issue with the set because overall that is really just changing the distribution which ultimately doesn't affect the product in the same way as some of these other issues. So we have massive quality issues with March of the Machine. First of all, I witnessed it firsthand in the pre-release myself. It was a pretty frustrating experience. I'm opening up the booster bags and all of a sudden the cards are getting darker and if they're a little bit overprinted in terms of the saturation of the ink, that's not great, but it's not that big a deal. But when I started to get to cards, I had one card that had tiny little chunks of cards stuck at the top of it and all these awful black glorps all over it. And I'm just looking at this going, what's going on? And then the person across from me starts going, dude, does this card feel, do they feel weird to you? And I'm like, no, the cards feel fine. And then all of a sudden I get to one random card that really does just feel awful. The print quality, especially 
in North America. Let's be very clear. There are multiple locations that Wizards of the Coast uses to print the cards. You've got the Japanese set boosters, which are much better quality than the North American boosters, at least the ones we get here in Canada. So if you get that printing, you can also get the, what is it? The Belgian printing, right? If I'm not mistaken, they still use Carta Mundi for that. And Carta Mundi is a competent company. So we get hosed in North America with the worst quality. And I know this because I opened set boosters before the pre-release kit. So you've got these quality issues. On top of that, you have people reporting just last night that multiple pre-release kits just didn't have any of the promos. So you've got terrible card quality. You've got that situation. Now this extends out past the pre-release kits as well. This is extending into other products and we're seeing multiple reports. I've seen a ton of of different damaged cards, like a crazy amount of pictures all over. And what's worse is when it comes to the serialized cards, we're dealing with the exact same scenario that we saw with the Brothers War. You go to the misprints group and there was a running gag where they said there's so many misprinted versions that the real versions are gonna be more valuable and more desirable. But there's a much bigger problem at play here. First of all, we have the lack of care that Wizards of the Coast is showing with their product, which is a massive issue. My biggest issue with the game right now, I mean, power creep and things like that are a big issue, but card quality is the one that sticks in my craw the most because it's something they absolutely can fix. You can make an argument for power creep and things like that being needed to push the game along a certain level of it, not too much, but a certain level is needed for the game to feel new and progress. But at the same time, you can't have a scenario where you're just going full tilt with power creep and you don't care about the card quality. Like you need to show us that you care about the game in some way. And seeing these new serialized cards coming out being all damaged and knowing what Wizards of the Coast process is for this, it's mind blowing. If you got a serialized card before from Brothers War and it was damaged, they would go, okay, here's the thing. We're not actually gonna send you out another one. We don't replace these serialized cards with actual serialized cards. We're just gonna send you out a regular foil version. And that's it. Now that at least half worked in terms of, let's say you got yourself a worm coil engine. You got a serialized one and it's damaged. You contact wizards, they say, okay, keep it. We're gonna send you a regular foil worm coil engine with the same artwork and you can have both. Now, obviously that doesn't really make up for it, right? Wizards of the Coast shouldn't be able to get away with this, but at least you're getting somewhat of the same card. But with the serialized cards for March of the Machine, we now have unique artwork, which means that they can't send you like, okay, here's the foil version of it, right? Because it doesn't exist. This artwork is only for the serialized cards. So you have a brand new scenario where I've already seen, what is it? I've seen about a dozen serialized cards and two out of that dozen are already damaged. Now maybe, maybe it's gonna turn out there, there are fewer damaged ones this time around. I don't know, but I do believe that Wizards of the Coast is going to have to adopt a new policy when it comes to serialized cards where essentially if you get a damaged serialized card, you can contact them. And then as a result of that, they'll go, we're gonna send you a new serialized card. Maybe not a replacement of that serialized card. So they're like, we never make new ones, but we'll have like a different run where we'll give you a special version of it. I don't know exactly how you fix it, but this is a scenario that's going to be the future of magic, right? Serialized cards are a thing now. Wizards of the Coast isn't going back on that. The Lord of the Rings one out of one. We're gonna see more and more of this insanity because when Wizards does these gimmicks, they wear off pretty quick. Like people get used to it. We saw with the masterpieces at first, people were going bang or crazy for them. And then the more masterpieces they made, the more it devalued, not just the new masterpieces, but the overall concept. So masterpieces went down. And already we see that if you look at the serialized cards from March of the Machine, they're making the Brothers War serialized cards not seem very special at all. Why would you care about a card that the only difference is it has a number stamp? on it. It doesn't have unique art. There's nothing else to make it special. And so we're already seeing this progression. It's an absolutely wild situation, but the card quality needs to be there. We shouldn't be living in a world where when you go and buy list cards to a shop, they will take cards that are beat up around the edges as if they're near mint and everybody just accepts that because Wizards of the Coast 
is making cards so poorly that you can't actually get near mint cards anymore. That's the world that it feels like we're living in. So it's absolutely wild. The next thing on the list is even crazier to me. The festival in a box. Now, we've had three festival in a boxes. The first festival in a box was pretty decent. The second festival in a box was like, they are getting rid of the, it's like yard sale style. They just had crap kicking around, shove it in a box, send it on out. And so people went, no, 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 no. Like the first festival in the box sold out really fast. And people were like, oh, I wanted that. And the second one was sitting on the website and people were just like, eh, no, no. And it didn't do that well, right? It did not sell out, which is what Wizards was hoping for. It's hilarious that they thought, yo, festival in a box, guys. Don't you want these pre-cons that nobody wants from Kamigawa and Kapena? And it's people like, this is the worst. And you want, like, they were offering less for the same price. It was wild. And then they came along with the third festival in a box. They're like, yo, okay, 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 okay. We actually want money. How about we give you three booster boxes for an actual deal? And people went, yeah, take my money. Let's do this. Like the boxes actually made it worth it. When I saw the picture at first for the, the third festival in a box, I thought it was like a fake mock-up somebody had made because I'm like, well, this actually seems like people might consider this a deal and buy this. But anyways, this the rabbit hole for this festival in a box started when I found a post that was just complaining about the promos. So there are arcane signet promos that Wizards includes in these festivals in a box. And they just threw them in the box. Like not in a top loader, not in a sleeve, just loosely tossed this card into the box. People think, oh, maybe it'll be within the secret layer that comes along with this. Maybe it'll be inside something. No, it's so loose in the box that somebody basically posted, yo, I couldn't find my promo. I had to dig through the box. I found it under a flap. And then when you go and read through the responses, there's all kinds of people going, oh, bro. And they go and dig through their trash. And like, there was one in mine too. So many people had absolutely no idea that the promo was even in there. It ends up getting damaged because they just loosely toss it in, which is absolutely wild to me, but it gets crazier. Not only do you have a ton of people going, yo, uh, I didn't, I didn't even know my promo was in there, which how do, uh, you ordered it. I guess nobody cares about the promo to a degree, but this is about wizard's lack of care with the product because it gets worse. You have the arcane signets. That's one thing. But then you start to scroll through the comments and this guy goes, yo, I got a golf grip in my box. And I saw that and I went, Okay, okay. Like, people make stuff up online. It happens, right? Like, that that's the case. So I went, eh, I've seen all kinds of crazy things. And normally, when one person posts something, I go, eh, okay, whatever. But then, but then another post showed up that, to me, confirmed golf grip guy, where basically it said, yo, I got the festival in a box, and instead of my box of Brothers War, they send me a pair of shoes. So there's a pair of brand new shoes in a bag. Wizards of the Coast <laughs> sent this out instead of the Brothers War Box. Now, before you dismiss this out of hand, before you go, no, friend, this is too absurd. This can't be reality. There is precedence for this. <laughs> when Wizards of the Coast got sued over the Mythic Edition boxes, if you didn't know there was a whole class action lawsuit, they went nuts scrambling and going, oh, hey, it would be really great if you didn't sue us. How about we just send, like, you know what? We're sorry we did what we did. We're just going to send you War of the Spark foil sheets. Now, they didn't say anything thing like hey this is us like trying to get you out of the lawsuit but the lawyers behind the lawsuit said if you accept these foil sheets that's you taking compensation for the damages so you won't be able to be part of the lawsuit probably so that was wizard's maneuver so they sent out these foil sheets and it was a fiasco so it's a massive uncut sheet of war of the spark like foil rares or mythic rares and they send them out to people and so many of them come out damaged, which was funny, and they had to get replaced. But what was really hilarious was there was a certain subsection of people who instead of being sent War of the Spark foil sheets by Wizards of the Coast, they were sent toothbrush 
attachments. That's what they got in the mail. A bunch of people were sent parts of toothbrushes instead of foil sheets of war and the spark as an apology. Was it just like, please don't sue us. Here's a toothbrush. I mean, well, that was supposed to be war of the spark. So they've done this in the past. This isn't something new. And I absolutely do believe that somebody got shoes and a golf grip. This is probably some crazy fulfillment center out there where you've just got minimum wage dudes who don't, uh, whatever, bro. We just got to get this stuff in the box. Get it out, get it out, get it out, get it out. You know, corporations hire this company. This company milks their workers as hard as possible. They really going to care about their job. Boom, somebody gets some shoes. Got to get them off the line. You know, like if, you, if I'm sitting there working, and I got the whole production line coming by and whatever. And I'm like, oh, I left shoes out. That's going to be bad for me. Bam, slap it in a box. Who cares, right? Like, it's really easy to see how it would happen. But which is this a billion dollar company. And the second festival in a box was a nightmare. So this third one, I mean, okay. I'll give them, I'll give them that mistakes are going to happen. People get sent shoes. They get sent golf grips, that kind of stuff. But... The singles, the Arcane Signet, the big check out this special promo that's only available at Magic 30 events. Celebrate Magic 30. And then they go, <laughs> and just toss it into the box and don't even care. That's amazing, right? So that wraps up the news. Big shout out to my patrons for supporting my channel. Thanks. Now, if you want to hang out some more, I'll be doing a live stream over on my other channel today. Feel free to come on by. Other than that, I will see you all next time.